You never can tell by looking at a horse in a pasture how fast he can run. And the future of a colt is as much a mystery as whether or not your own son will someday become a famous athlete. Although man has been raising and training horses for thousands of years. But whatever his destiny, the horse is one of our most prized domesticated servants. Horse racing dates back to the dawn of history, early Egypt and the Grecian Olympic Games of almost a thousand years before Christ. And harness racing, or sulky racing, is about the nearest thing to the chariot races of ancient times. Harness racing is primarily an American version of this sport of kings, and its history is practically contemporaneous with that of the Republic of the United States. The patriarch of American harness races was imported messenger brought to this country in 1788 and buried with military honors in 1808. Here we are at the Palm Springs racetrack in California with horses and drivers on their way to the starting line. It's always a question as to who is the most nervous and tense in those few minutes before the race, audience, drivers, or the horses themselves. Then when they're off, one's nerves begin to buzz and snap. The faster they go, the more rapid thumps one's heart, and the closer the leaders stay together, the higher runs the blood pressure. It may be the sport of kings, but it's also the sport of anyone who can stand in a chair or hold on to a rail. Harness racing, although not as frequently seen as jockey racing, is as thrilling as any other variety of the sport, and has produced some horses of sterling quality, whose names have been a household word through generations of sport-loving people. The names of Lady Suffolk, Peter Manning, Hanover's Bertha, and Dan Patch, King of Paces, will long endure. The stallion Dan Patch is one of the most famous horses that ever lived. In 1906, he ran the mile in harness in the record time of 1 minute 55 and 1 quarter seconds, which is going some. But when they come into the home stretch, record breakers or just platers, the thrill is the same. <laughs> What's this, women? Right you are, my friends, and this is not just a special stunt put on for the movies, either. These are bona fide lady sulky drivers, four of them. There they come down the track, and once they pass the starting line, they're off with the speed and skill of their masculine colleagues. Just watch them go. They fight for position and take chances of a spill with the daring abandon of any man. Mrs. George Robertson, number one, is driving Hal Woolen. Mrs. Harold Hicks, number two, driving Watson Peter. Mrs. James B. Oliver, number three, driving Star Bright, and Mrs. Frances Crocker, number four, driving Cinco Barn. And there's a very important reason for their pressing their horses so hard and fighting so strenuously to win. Well, this is a California State Championship Lady Amateur Drivers Harness Race. It's a mile race, and there they come to the finish. Boy, what a race! And now... We're going to introduce Mrs. James B. Oliver, the fair winner of the state championship. Here are the four competitors, friends again. Sulky racing, to say the least, appears to be very good for the complexion. There can be aristocratic lineage, class, and perfect training even among horses that draw heavy wagons, as evidenced by these beautifully matched pure blood percherons at the W.K. Kellogg Institute of Animal Husbandry of the University of California at Pomona. The principal object of the Kellogg Institute is the raising of registered Arabian horses and some of the finest in the world that are to be found on the ranch. This is one of them. Its name is Shantez, a creature of marvelous beauty and incidentally holder of the world's half-mile running record. Here is King John, born and reared in the faraway desert of Arabia, an aristocratic steed of the highest order. He was first trained as a polo pony by the 12th Royal Lancers. He was also trained as a racehorse, running the mile and a half in the exceedingly fast official time of 2 minutes 34 seconds flat. When brought to California, he won the coveted first prize as a saddle horse at the fashionable Los Angeles National Horse Show. There are 80-odd Arabian horses on this ranch, and every one of them an outstanding example of the finest of blood and breeding. Here we see Mr.
witness is Mark Smith giving a demonstration of this creature's perfect poise and rhythm. Those who saw that great photo play, The Scarlet Empress, will recall Marlene Dietrich riding a beautiful white horse during her portrayal of Catherine the Great. It was this particular horse that was chosen for the purpose. No sculptor could carve a more imposing masterpiece in white marble. And just by watching this superb creature, one can readily understand why judges of fine horses should acclaim him so highly. to having a great deal of endurance and courage, the pure Arabian horse is inbred with an unusual amount of intelligence, which makes it easy to train them to perform feats not natural to their repertoire. Here we see Danada doing a bit of high stepping. Danada also does a sort of Arab dance with bells on her graceful ankles. Notice the extreme grace with which the hoofs barely touch the ground. Powerful, swift, invariably gentle, affectionate, and tactable, in addition to his beauty, the Arabian has been prized by every horse-loving age. For more than 127 years, every winner of the famous English derby descended from an Arabian. No wonder it is they are termed sires of nearly all fine horses. Farana, who is here being ridden by Mark Smith, the head trainer, is the champion lightweight stock horse of the West and has won many first prizes in various competitions. Farana has a repertoire of tricks and fancy riding that are all his own, as you're about to see. This whirling act, he probably learns whirling dervishes of the land of his ancestors. Look out, he's going to ride right over the camera. Nope, it's just another of his riding acts. And he also goes in reverse, just as well as ahead. As a famous Arab chieftain once said, when you find a horse like this, give thanks to Allah for having sent thee a blessing. One of the sleekest and most graceful of all the Arabians on this ranch is Pallet. One of his specialties is liberty jumping, or going over the four-foot jumps at liberty without a rider and at all times entirely under control, merely by the spoken orders of his trainer who stands in the middle of the large ring. Notice the grace in this slow motion scene. And over again. Then at command, he instantly comes to his trainer. Little wonder it is that fine Arabian horses have been so highly prized and sought after by horse lovers the world over, and that the desert owners in Arabia and the lands bordering the Sahara Desert have been so loath to part with these marvelous creatures, which they have so diligently developed down through the centuries. 